what does creativity mean to me? It means, <laughs> it means being exhilarated and frustrated all at the same time, constantly. It means uh, having a smile on my face at seeing something that's within grasp and then tearing my hair out when what I've created doesn't nearly match what I thought it should in my imagination. It seems like it can take as quickly and as spontaneously as just a few moments to something that takes years to come to fruition. My name is Armand Baltazar. I am a film designer, but currently my life's passion has been as a writer and an illustrator of a science fiction adventure story called Timeless. I think for me, having worked in film and working as a designer, uh, designers are sort of in this mode of thinking that they need a problem. And the moment a problem is presented, their pistons start to fire and it starts to move. When you don't have a problem to solve, your mind then creates and seeks out problems. In the case might be, I want to create an interesting story because I have not, I'm not working on one right now. I want to create a beautiful visual because it's within me to do so. I want to do something that's horrifying and scary because it would feel great to feel that way, just if only for a moment. I, I guess I sort of, my creativity comes from this need to solve a problem and a lot of times it's problems, and I don't mean it's literally a problem, but something of interest. I frame as a problem that I can get my juices flowing, I can roll up my sleeves and start to dig in and, and figure out what the resolution is. Even if it means banging my head against the wall because I haven't yet quite gotten the right thing. Or even if it means that one solution that I was so passionate about going down the road to finding out, ending up turning a corner down another road, uh, completely unexpected and having abandoned the first one altogether. Like for example, this timeless book that I worked on is a culmination of three other stories in part that I had started years ago, but never completed and never had a reason to do so until my son asked me to write a story for him. And I found pieces of things that I had created before finally having a voice, a meaningful voice in this new story. <laughs> what I created for the book, in terms of the total number of art, probably numbers close to anywhere from 500 to 1,000 drawings and paintings. What's actually in the book numbers closer to about 150 to 175. My ritual is to make a whole bunch of horrible, ugly, nasty drawings that the world will never see and test my ideas through them. And the other thing is, to make the worst drawing I can possibly make just to get it out of the way. So if I begin the day having done the worst drawing possible, it allows me then to go, okay, now that's over. Now you can actually just concentrate on at the task at hand of, of making something worthwhile. For me, the process is akin to building something and having a toolbox. Now, what I'm building really requires a different set of tools, depending on what it is. And sometimes it's dependent on how I feel like building something. So in the case of making the artwork for Timeless, more times than not, I would start as simple sketches, sometimes on a napkin or on a post-it or some random piece of paper. Other times it would be in my sketchbook. And when I draw in my sketchbook, a lot of times I do so because I want to track how a, an idea evolves. Other times I will have the idea so fully formed in my head that um, require a means to see it in, um, in space or to move through it. Like let's say I'm designing a room or a building or um, some interior of a castle. A few sketches may do the trick, but it's not really about how the way it looks. It's about how it feels to be in that space. So when I have that desire, a lot of times what I'll do is rather than draw a little sketch or a series of sketches, I'll go to my computer and I'll build a model. I will build the space as I would for a movie set. Other times, let's say for example, if I'm designing a character, those all start from drawings. And it starts from feeling and it starts from seeing those shapes come to life. And then I'll paint them. I'll get a painting that feels like the character and at that point, I'll almost do what I did with designing a space in a computer. I'll want to see it and feel it in, in physical form. So 
we'll take these character designs and we'll sculpt them or we'll 3D print them. And on occasion, there are characters that are both like a set and like a character, like the giant robot in my story. He's so large and complicated that it really merits not only a series of drawings and paintings, but to build in physical form so I could sort of turn around the model and see what he looks like and see what he feels like and also to, to build him in a computer so I can sort of put him in camera, put uh, characters next to him and compose him and see him sort of like narratively. And I'll do this with vehicles as well. But when you see it in 3D, when you can hold it, you can feel it, and you can move around it, you can imagine sitting in the cockpit of a flying machine that you've designed or within a car that is also a submarine uh, that you could ride in. And all of these things stimulate the, the most important thing in creativity, which is the creating of this world. So every time I do a drawing or a painting or a, uh, create a sculpture, or a computer model, what happens is the world becomes more real and it gives me more tools to write the story and to create the visuals that will take the viewer or the reader uh, on that journey with me. For nearly 20 years I've been designing films, I've been doing concept art, I've been doing production art. I illustrate in a way that is shaped by, uh, by my experiences in film design. I wanted to create a book that read and felt like you were seeing a movie and reading a book. And all those skills came to bear on the way I designed. So when I design a room or a location, I would not only draw these things to see what they looked like, but I would build them as sets the way I would for a movie. And it allowed me to sort of inhabit the space and see the possibilities, the way a filmmaker, a director, or a cinematographer might go on location and walk around this fantastic castle and go, this could happen here. Or the light should fall in this room in such a way at this point in the story that, you know, sort of emphasizes the the feeling of the moment. This is Diego chasing this mysterious girl in a dream, and it's very open as he's chasing her through the city. In the text, he feels like there's some sort of impending danger, and he drops into the city, he drops lower into the streets, and the walls start to rise up around him. And as we get closer, everything becomes much more claustrophobic. The lighting becomes much more extreme. And then in the dream, the world starts to come apart, and it's coming down all on him. What's important to me in adding detail or the detail in the work is what you choose to add in and why you add it in. I think that having the right detail is what makes the design work. It's detail that gives you the history of something, detail that holds your attention where you want it to be held, and it's the restraint of detail to sort of help guide the eye to where you're supposed to look. And I think it needs to have a purpose, even if that purpose is to be beautiful. But being beautiful in and of itself isn't an end all. That just is sort of the required byproduct. Even if the intention was to be ugly, it should be beautifully ugly. You chose for it to be the way it is, and you put your heart and soul into the parts that are important and should be just enough um, to take you there, or just enough to make you feel like it's real, or just enough that you're looking at this painting and you can smell the smells of the place, or you can feel the texture of the wood, or the rust of the metal. That's the right kind of detail. All the artwork in this book, and, and for the book series that, that are going to come after this book, are an absolute labor of love. I've been very, very fortunate as an artist to have worked with some of the most creative and brilliant people uh, in the film industry and to get a chance to actually have something to say, to have a story to create and be able to use everything that I've learned and, and work to be good at in service of something that I care about is what gives me the most satisfaction and pride in making something 
yeah, that's not only for this book, but really what it is, is it's, it, it was for my son. And it's for any young person, actually any person um, who could see possibility. That's what I uh, find the most pride in. The thing I would say to anyone who is following a passion project or actually following their passion is to be absolutely fearless in pursuit of what their imagination can unlock and the strength and courage that they have to see it all the way through. But having talent is not a magical, mystical thing. If you have talent, that's great, but it means nothing compared to your desire to actually use it, to, to do the hard work, to fail, to basically uh, embrace failing and knowing that that is the part of, of succeeding. Every step of failure is a step closer to succeeding. As long as you're clear about what it is you want, you're clear and you're truthful to yourself that you want it. I mean, that's the only thing, that's the path. And if you can fulfill that promise to yourself, the promise of what you can be, that's everything. Stay on the path.